besides the gears. Okay, so what are the other things you need to become a blogger? Number one, you need to have a story. All right, we, we will talk about it in detail. And then you need to film that story. And then we need to edit that story. Now create an account on such platforms such as YouTube or similar platforms. Upload your videos to that particular, particular platform and promote your videos. Then keep going. You know, you can't just stop by making one video and you haven't seen any result from the public. No, you should keep going. And then if you wish, you can monetize your video too. That way you make some money. All right, so now let's talk about step one, which is story. A vlog is, just, is not just about your day or what you feel that day. Most of us think, just hit the record button and shoot whatever you see wherever you go. And the truth is, Nobody will be interested to watch it. Maybe yes, once you, once you, once in a while, that's when you have a massive followers or fan following. We must understand blog as a story. That's first. And a blogger is a storyteller. You must have a story to tell your audience. Let it be anything, something silly, something funny, something about food, something about fashion, something about a play, something about your your holiday, staycation, anything it could be. It could be anything about a product. It could be about your makeup, something technical, a mobile phone, a computer, something like that. You know, imagine and during my school days or my college days, when we reach back home from school or university or work, you know, we share our day with our family. Like what happened on that particular day at school or university or work just like a story, you know, just like a movie story. We narrate it as a movie and they listen to it, right? Because they, they are engaged in your narration. Just like that, it's very simple. You need to keep your audience engaged in your narration. So consider every blog like a movie. It has a beginning, it has a middle part, and it has a climax, which is where you actually wrap your blog. Now, talking about story, creating a story. You need to have a script or a plan. Don't be afraid. When I say a script, don't, don't think that you need to make a script like a, a feature film or a movie. No, it's very simple. What you need to have in your script or a plan is what are you going to do? What are you going to talk about? And what are the things you should shoot? And what are the things you should not talk about? And what are the things you should not show? And this way, since the since it has been the first step, like to have a script or a plan, it helps you even in post-production. What is post-production? Post-production is where you actually edit your, your content or the video. So it must have a beginning where you actually talk about how are you gonna, uh, or where are you going to go, or what are you trying to show, or what topic are you talking about in your video? So you give an intro about that. Okay, so look at the screen. So it has a beginning, where you talk about, or maybe you even show a glimpse of what uh, you, where you're going or what product are you talking about. And then you have a journey where you take the audience along with you to the subject or topic which you're talking about. And then the climax, this is where you actually reveal what you, or this is where actually they see what they've been wanting to walk, see in your content, all right? And then the wrap is where you conclude your video. So you cannot end your video abruptly because that is like a miscommunication. That's like, you know, uh, turning them away from you. So people will not be engaged and people will not be, you know, uh, interested to watch your vlog again. So once you have all these things ready, you are ready to vlog. So step two will be how to film a vlog. And what step one we spoke about creating a story, how to make a script or plan, and then we are talking about how to film a vlog because you, had, you have everything. You have done the pre-production work in papers. Now you need to execute it. The production happens. This is where we need to talk about the camera and stuff. So before that, be comfortable in front of the camera. Don't be afraid. Always keep eye contact with your audience, with the camera, so that people are really feeling that you are having a contact with them and you really care for them and you are talking to them. 
because you don't want to looking away from your camera and talking because that that kills the interest all right and engage with your audience asking suggestions questions and recommendations and also shoot more don't be stingy don't think okay i'm not i'm not talking my vlog is for five minutes so i'll just shoot for five minutes no you should actually shoot for 15 minutes so that you have some extra footage to show we call it b-roll so there is a role which is the main shot like uh, the main content you're talking about and there's b-roll b-roll is something which is uh, supplemental or alternative footage intercut with the main shot basically if i'm talk about Burj Khalifa or some uh, special place in uae where how my experience was and if this is a video talking about that particular experience and i show in in between if i show those clips of how my experience was or if i show of a video or a photograph of that building or that place those things includes in b-roll you know that's how b-roll starts so please invest your time in getting b-rolls do not uh, you know ignore them they actually bring beauty to your uh, video and also production it increases the production value now shooting or filming this is where it gets technical and we are talking the camera setting if you're new to cameras there is nothing wrong with filming your youtube videos in auto setting but my only recommendation when it comes to shooting in auto settings is actually to shoot in shutter priority mode so as you know every camera has different modes where your camera is in automatic mode there is uh, different presets such as pose portrait uh, action no flash mode you will find it on top of the camera but what i would suggest is uh, in those modes you are actually not having any control over the camera because the camera is controlling everything your job is to carry the camera and just aim the camera at what subject are you shooting and just press the button that actually makes your life easy but you you do not have control right you want to make your video look a little more better you you want to make you make your video look like the way you want not the camera wants, right not how the camera wants so control either you shoot your videos in manual mode which is completely completely manual we take complete control over the camera or you have a couple of other options but i would suggest to use in tv mode since it is video all right it is tv mode stands for time value it is definitely better than auto mode because you can control the camera partially not completely though now regardless of the mode you're shooting the first and foremost thing is focus yes if you're shooting something and your subject is not in focus none of your audience are going to watch it, right you're watching my webinar now and if you watch this video where i was out of focus and you could see something at the background or something else is in focus you would not be interested to watch it, right because that is the point of interest i'm the point of interest in this particular frame and i am the one who's talking or maybe you can call me as a subject so whatever you're shooting you should keep your subject always in focus you should either in autofocus you have two features in your camera either in autofocus or manual focus. in autofocus you need to understand this part where the camera is going to control your focus you just need to press your focus button or the shutter button half the camera will focus all right you don't need to focus but when you are shooting video in video mode the autofocus will focus on your subject even if it is moving even if it is not moving but if you want to capture something which is moving of course video is motion photography that means movement is always there we are not talking about still photography we are talking about motion photography so if you want to focus on subject on something which is moving you need to put it on autofocus and plus you need to make sure servo mode is on there is a servo that, which means the motor will keep the subject always in focus regardless whether it's moving or not it actually tracks the subject and keeps the uh, keeps the subject in focus always for you in manual focus the camera will not touch the focus at all so please before you start filming a vlog before we start filming something make sure to check whether your lens is on autofocus or manual and then you should ask this question to yourself whether are you looking for autofocus or manual 
because in manual focus the camera will not focus for you you got to focus it by yourself so when do we use autofocus and when do we use manual focus this is as per my personal experience if you're shooting something stationary like a product video or maybe even uh, makeup videos in that case because as you can see now this video is shot in autofocus and once i bring my hand in front of my face i believe you can see the focus is changing because i've blocked my face right now if i remove my hand from there the camera will refocus on my face because that's because i have selected here face tracking autofocus that means it will keep my face always in focus no matter where i move but if something else comes in between what happens is the focus will change because it cannot read my face so in that case if you're doing makeup videos or makeup vlogs or something like that if you think your hand is going to come in front of your face it's going to cover your face it's going to mask your face then it's it's better to use in manual focus if you don't want the switch to happen because some some uh, some of us don't prefer that all right otherwise you can choose face uh tracking mode and autofocus that is actually very good because canon is very much phenomenal in giving the best autofocus in the entire camera uh, lineups at seen so that is what is an autofocus and if you're shooting something like a product if you're shooting a video from overhead or if you're shooting landscapes or something like that in that case you know unless you move the camera or you move your subject nothing is going to move so you can leave your uh focus in manual that's always now talking about camera settings i was talking about tv mode because it's definitely better than auto mode because you can control the camera partially and make your videos look like better so let's look at the uh mode dial on top of our camera as you can see on the screen this is the mode dial this camera is a dslr and this is a model which i was talking about it has different modes on it all right and the model has been divided into two the the modes which we can control are called as creative zone and the modes where we cannot do anything other than carrying the camera and pressing the button those are called basic zone we are not here to talk about basic zone we are talking about creative zone and only the tv here because all other modes are being used like av and p are used maybe you can say in for photography for video i strongly suggest to use tv at the beginning stage so in tv mode you can control the shutter speed rest everything is controlled by the camera rest everything means rest of the parameters such as in camera there are three parameters first one being shutter speed second one being aperture and the third one iso don't be afraid i'm not going to talk about all those things now but just giving you an idea some of you would be knowing it already right these are the three parameters we have in camera to control the light or you can say the brightness or you can say the exposure of your camera so if i control the shutter speed i can increase the light increase the light if i control the aperture i can increase the light the light if i control the iso i can increase the light and decrease the light so we are in tv mode and this is uh, how your screen is going to look different layouts are there but this is just to give you an idea so that you can practice this at home later so in tv mode you control the shutter speed i know i haven't spoken about iso i haven't spoken much about the aperture but don't worry we will talk about iso i'm not going to talk about aperture in this webinar we will be talking in another one in future but let's talk about shutter speed so most of you would be knowing shutter speed if you are familiar with still photography we say shutter speed controls the amount of time the camera sensor is subjected to light so let's say the camera sensor is like this uh, sub, uh can, camera shutter is like this it opens and closes so by deciding what the number on shutter speed because as you can see on the screen i have here the shutter speed is 1 by 2000 so if i make it 2000 the the shutter will open and close like a snap it's going to be really quick open and close and you can adjust you can decrease it to 30 seconds and you can increase it to 1 by 4000 or 1 by 8000 depending on the camera you are using so 30 seconds means i keep it open for 30 seconds so the light is continuously entering inside the camera and after 30 seconds the shutter will close 
So I have a very bright light. This is how we practice in photography. So in photography, we use shutter speed in order to control the light as well as to freeze the action. So if you want to freeze the action, if let's say someone is jumping and you want to freeze that action on, you know, in the mid air, we use a higher shutter. And if you don't, if you if you have familiar about these photographs, like the star trails or the light trails where you see the light is going, the cars are like, you know, the light streaks. Those photographs are taken with a lower shutter because the motion is not here. That's how shutter speed works in still photography. But in video, the way we use shutter speed is in a different manner. Though it affects uh, our light in the same manner, how it doesn't, we are not really looking forward to freeze the action in video with the shutter speed. As you can see on the screen, we have three types of cameras here. One is a DSLR, the other two are mirrorless. So to control the shutter speed in TV mode, you just need to turn this dial left and right, all right? So what you see on the extreme right-hand side, that particular model is called EOSR, and the extreme left-hand side is M50, which is the most one of the most famous camera used by most vloggers. And what you see in the middle is a DSLR, which is used by most of the photographers and vloggers too. All right. So as you can see, with different shutter speed, the examples are here. Starts by one, one by half a second, and one fourth of a second, one by eighth of a second one by 15th of a second, one by 30th of a second, different, different shutter speed. So you don't want to end up having a video which looks like half a second. See, it's like a ghost. So we need to have an appropriate shutter speed with the, where our video looks, or the movements in our video looks better. So let's look at an example here. I will show you a video. Let me just... And that video. It's just five. So, all right. If you watch this video, I hope the video is visible to you. This video was taken at one by eight of uh, a second in TV mode. As you can see, the camera is moving and the person is moving, but the movement is not that smooth, right? It's not natural looking. So now I changed the shutter speed to one by 640, which is a higher or greater speed. And as you can see, it looks okay, but there is something not so natural about the movement. Now let's see, we will try to change the shutter speed again. Now this is one by 50th of a second. This looks very natural, isn't it? Very smooth. So that's about shutter speed. Now, how do we choose the shutter speed? We have different values, one by 50, one by 640, one by eight, until one by 8,000. But how do we decide that this is a number? Because you just saw a video where I have chosen one by 50. It's not random. Because in order to decide what shutter speed I am going to choose, I need to understand how many frames per second I am shooting. So video is called a motion photography, as you guys know. It's a sequence of images moving in a certain particular time, right? So if you have one image of me like this, and the second image is like this, and third, fourth, five, six, seven, so you have many sequence, like you have a sequence of images in different different movements. And if I play it in a certain speed, it will look like a video. That's how a classic animations were made. So it is known as frames per second. So how many frames are being moved in a second to give you one motion? So for the, the industry standard is 24 or 25. 
24 is what been used in uh, cinemas and 25 is for YouTube and even you can use 24. So the, in the industry standard is 24 frames per second. So inside your camera settings, you will find a place where you can select what quality or recording you want, either 4K or Full HD or HD. And along with that, you will find, as you can see on the screen, 25P. P stands for progressive. And as you can see, that's 4K, which is selected by default. And the, the next one on the right-hand side, you can see Full HD, which is 25P. And then underneath that one, you will find Full HD 50P, right? So this 25P means 25 frames per second. The other one is also 25 frames per second. Then we have 50 frames per second. We're not going to talk about 50 now. Let's keep it the basic. So 25 frames per second. So once we have decided that we are going to use 25 frames per second, and why we are using 25 frames per second is because to get the most natural looking movement or motion in our video, which is like similar to how we see with our eyes. All right. So 25 is our frames per second. Once we have chosen 25 as our frames per second, then we come to shutter speed and we multiply 25 to double the FPS, which is 25 into 2 gives us 50. So we choose our shutter speed by 50. Do not go behind how it works and there is no formula for it. Just follow this as, or just by heart this one as a cheat sheet. Like if, if you're shooting a normal video for YouTube or contents or anything like that, you are gonna choose 25 or 24 as your FPS, multiply that with two, which gives you, if you're choosing 24, it gives you 20, uh, 48. If you're choosing 25, it gives you 50. On our cameras, we do not have one by 40 of a second, so we choose one by 50. So one by 50 of a shutter speed, which is double your F. And I would suggest not to change your shutter speed no matter what happens, all right? And the camera will not interf interfere with your shutter speed on TV mode. So you are the one who is going to control the shutter speed. Rest everything is controlled by camera. You, the camera will not, in change your shutter speed. And you have an option depending on the camera you're using, lock the the value you have set. So no matter where you touch by even by mistake, the shutter speed value will not change. As I said earlier, the aperture is however controlled by the camera in TV mode and you don't need to worry about that now. Now do you think that was a lot of information to take it in? We barely covered half of the things you should know for effectively using your cameras while vlogging. But actually this was a start. I believe uh, you're following along. Let's move on and let's talk about ISO now. What is ISO? ISO is the sensitivity of your camera sensor. There's a sensor in the camera, right? That camera sends sensitivity towards light. Like our eyes, when we have too harsh light coming in our eyes, towards our eyes, what do we do? We wear a sunglass or we try to cover our eyes, right? Same as that, the ISO acts as, a, a, you can say a cooling glass, a sunglass, something like that for your sensor. So when you press the ISO button, you will find different values, starting from 100, 200, 400, 800, 1000, 1600, 2000, depending on the camera model, you will have different, different higher values on it. But our main aim is to keep your ISO as low as possible. So if you keep your ISO 100, it will produce the sharpest image with zero visual noise. Now, what is noise? If you look at your screen, you have pictures of a cushion, which are one on the left-hand side has a lot of noise, and the right-hand side has no noise at all. It's super smooth and clean. So if you want an image with, uh, like the way you see on the right-hand side, you should choose your ISO value always low. All right, but on a sunny day of, filming outside, this will be easy to keep your ISO in 100 because you are wearing one of the darkest sunglasses. It's like that because your image is going to be dark. The, the, light, the light will be blocked, which is coming inside your camera through the lens. All right? But if you're filming in, indoors like now, you need to have loads of light, which can actually surpass the, the ISO and make your video brighter. So in indoors, if you do not have that much light, which can make your video brighter, you can actually increase your ISO. Try to stay between 800 or 1600. If you go beyond that one, you, you will have 
loads of noise coming in to your camera. Again, that completely depends on the camera model you're using. There are different range of models from Canon. So there are cameras even at 2000, you will have no noise at all. So depending on the camera model, you can increase your ISO. Always it's better to try to stay below 1600. And I hope that's uh, clear for you. And if you want, you can take down this uh, screenshot of the ISO values you can follow. You know, as a you know learning learning stage, you can follow these numbers. But the dark indoors or night, I hope you won't be using that one because if if you're using ISO 12,800 or higher higher number, your video or your image is going to have loads of noise. So until 1,600 or 2,000 is fine. So if you want, you can get a screenshot of that one. That will help you. Now, let's talk about white balance. So we have, uh, we spoke about, uh, yes, we spoke about ISO, we spoke about shutter speed, right? The shutter speed and the ISO is so far what we can control is something which affects our light. All right, but uh, white balance, it doesn't give you light. White balance is a function of adjusting wh white color in your video so that white objects in your video looks white. Let's say if I was wearing a white shirt and if I have kept so many lights here, let's say I've kept a yellow light and a white light and you don't want to make this t-shirt look or this shirt look something else. You know, it should look white. Whatever the result, whatever the reality is, that's what you show in the video, right? So that is white balance. The function of adjusting color tone so that white objects in your video look white. Well, it's very easy. Uh, only thing is you need to understand, you need to ask a quest, few questions to yourself before you start filming. If, if I was here, if I was wearing a white shirt, it's not just only for white shirt, anything. Even your skin will change your color. So the first thing, foremost thing is you need to know, you need to ask yourself, what is my light source? All right, what does my light? Here, my light source is a light which is kept here in daylight balance, and there is another light which is, which is in red color. Besides that one, so I know what is my light source. So according to the light source, I set my white balance. It's very simple. So if you go here on the camera screen, you will find a couple of options. The first one obviously is the automatic white balance. And the second one is sunny. And we have shade, cloudy, and or overcast sky. Or you have another bulb, which is called tungsten, and then fluorescent flash. Let's not talk about the flash and custom and K, which is Kelvin. Let's talk about until fluorescent. If you don't want to take this headache, you know, of changing the white balance, you can leave your white balance always on automatic, but you just need to keep an eye on it before you start recording and see how the colors are looking, how the skin is looking, how the white color is looking in your image. If it is showing too bluish or too uh, yellowish, then that means you need to adjust your white balance or you just need to, you know, turn off your camera or turn on or change your white balance and bring it back. Automatic white balance will correct the white balance. That is good. And for outdoors also the same thing, you just need to reset the automatic white balance twice. So your camera will give you the best possible result. All right. Otherwise, if you're shooting under the sun and if sun is your light source, you just shoot the sun. I mean, you just uh, choose sun as your option. And the next option you have is shade. Basically, you're not, your sunlight, the sunlight is not directly hitting your subject. In that case, you choose shade. Then we have overcast sky where the sun is not visible, sky is filled with clouds. In that case, you can choose that one. Now, the next two options is very easy. If you give uh, you give little uh, focus on it, as you can see, the next one is a bulb. The bulb is which signifies the tungsten light source. I, I'm sure you may have seen nowadays, almost all cafes or restaurants you go, you find that yellow color, warm light, right? everywhere this is what is in the trend now so in that kind of situation just remember in that kind of situation like you have a yellow warm light everywhere in that kind of situation you just choose that bulb easy it will make your color tone much more better and the normal office tube lights 
instead of the yellow color, you have the white long tube light, right? So if those things are your light source, like I'm talking about the light temperature, the color tone, if those are the light source, then you choose a fluorescent one, the next option. That's how you do it. If you have chosen a wrong white balance, then your results are gonna look like these. As you can see on my screen now, first one is shot with automatic white balance. And the next one is cloudy. That you can see the difference. Third one is daylight, shade, fluorescent, tungsten, and Kelvin, that is custom. That's okay. But you don't want to, surely you don't want to have your video look like the bluish video, which is a tungsten option because that was in the light source. That was in the light source where, when I was shooting this uh, picture. The next one is fluorescent. The right one over here is the custom one, which is Kelvin, which I shot uh, with flash and this and that. So I had to adjust my white balance according to the temperature of the light. It's simple. If you don't want to take headache on it, leave it on automatic. That's fine, that should help you. But always keep an eye on your screen before you start recording. Because if you see your video is like this, then you need to adjust or scroll through different white balance and bring it back to automatic white balance. It will, it will actually make your white balance look much more better. Because once you have a result like this one, like tungsten, you cannot change or bring it uh, like this after you have captured the video in the software or anything. It's going to be really hard. All right. The next option on your camera you will find is picture style. What is picture style? Picture style is basically like a filter. You know, by selecting picture style, you can obtain image characteristics matching your photographic expression. So basically, you can see different options there: automatic, standard, portrait, landscape, fine detail, neutral. These are basically for you know photography. But here, what I would recommend while you're shooting video, if you are a person who like to color correct your you know, videos in, while editing, then you, I would recommend you to use neutral because your video is going to look very dull and flat so that you get more dynamic control in achieving a desired look. So you can increase your saturation, increase your sharpness in whichever way you want. You know? But in other presets such as auto or standard, it is already at the maximum. You know, it's like, like uh, the saturation will be high, the contrast will be high, the sharpness will be high. So if ever you want to decrease it or if you want to, you know, play with those uh, parameters, it will be really hard for you. So if you want to color grade your, you know, uh, video while you're editing it, you should choose neutral. Again, this is the basic one, but professional cameras will give you log, Canon log, which has another dynamic, another level dynamic control over it changing the looks that's how professional videos are shot but on normal basic cameras this is what you get so if and if you don't want to edit your you know edit your colors or this and that if you just want to shoot your video then if if it is a video like the video what you what which you're watching right now like head shot videos or something like that then you can choose portrait or if you're doing some product review or something then you can choose fine detail uh, as a preset while shooting the video Next, we are talking about audio. Audio is very important. That's the reason you're listening to this because you are able to hear what I'm saying. So most of the cameras, all the cameras, in fact, has built-in microphone. But a built-in microphone, what it does, it captures everything around it, right? Everything around it. It's good. It's good if you don't have uh, noise, background noise, if you don't have any other wind blowing in, or if you don't have too much echo happening inside your room or the place where you're shooting, that's good. But you know, adding a directional microphone, like uh, either a wireless microphone, which can go on your shirt or t-shirt, or if you have a shotgun microphone or a directional microphone, mic models such as, uh, as you can see, this is a vlogger's kit from Canon. This is G7X Mark II, I believe, and a small grip head, small tripod, and it has a microphone. It comes along with it as a package. So these are the models I would, you know, suggest as a beginner, Rode Video Mic Go and Rode Video Mic Pro. These mics are actually really good. And even at outdoors, it actually captures your voice than capturing the background noise. And also, if you have this filter on, it's called Dead Cat, actually. If you have this filter on, it actually cancels a lot of wind noise. Again, this is optional, but I strongly recommend for audio clarity's sake. All right. Now let's talk about 
resolution and quality of the video recording. You may have heard of 4K, 8K, 6K, different, different resolutions. Whatever video resolution you choose to shoot in, you must ensure you have fast, high capacity memory card as shooting video eats up much more memory than shooting stills. All right, so it's just not about how your camera or what your camera can give you. Maybe your camera can give you 8K, 6K, 4K, you know, but you should also find the best, fast, high capacity card so that your recording, also the data transfer between your camera and your card is also good and it also captures the visuals in a best way. Also consider having a good resolution monitor to view footage on, for example, while you're editing the video, your laptop or your computer should be capable of, you know, play, giving you a smooth playback of 4K or 8K video, you know? But personally, I, I, I don't see any, you, you know, use for 4K in vlogging because most of us, we shoot uh, full HD. That should be enough. And if you're shooting 4K, you will need a 4K monitor so that you can accurately review the quality of the footage because hardly people are using 4K monitors here. So full HD will be sufficient. And uh, make sure your computer has enough memory and you have a very good uh, editing program which can handle this footage. And yes, that's it. So if you want, you can look at the chart, the quality setting or the file size. This is the reference from Canon M50, which records 4K2. 4K 25 uh, frames per second, and <laughs> excuse me. So depending upon the size of your card, like this is a sample which is a reference from 32 GB memory card. So if you're shooting a 4K file on 32 GB memory card, it should be able to give you 35 minutes and 33 seconds of uh, video footage. And if you're shooting full HD, you know 50 frames per second, that should give you one hour, 10 minutes. Full HD 25, it gives you two hours and 22 minutes. Please make sure to get high speed memory card, Do not go for a cheaper or options from any store. You know, you may find dirt cheap memory cards. Don't go for that because there's no use because you, some cameras will not even record anything on it. And uh, even if it records, there will be loads of error, errors happening there. So it's better to invest little more money and get the best. Now, if you don't have a tripod, if you don't even have a mini tripod hand grip to you know, shoot videos and your video is being shaky and it's not looking nice, you have an option in your camera called electronic image stabilization. This is really helpful while you're doing handheld shots. You know, if your camera has electronic image stabilization, it helps you to take smooth handheld shots even without a gimbal. So you don't even have to have a gimbal, I believe. Most of you will be knowing what is a gimbal. It's a, it's a device which is used to uh, take uh, smooth videos without any handshake, you know? So even without a gimbal, if you have a minor, minute or minor shakes, it will really help you to stabilize your shot. Some lenses also will come with IS, image stabilization as a feature. It also serves the same purpose. It will help you to have a decent amount of uh, smooth uh, motion in your footage. So let's look at uh, the example video here. First, I will show you the picture style. So if you shoot no, a neutral picture style, this is how your video is gonna look. So as you can see, this is on the left-hand side is automatic. This is a picture style, automatic picture style. And the right-hand side, we have neutral. So you have two options. As you can see, the neutral one looks dull and the uh, picture style automatic looks more of saturation and sharpness. So let's see the difference now. This is completely in neutral. Now, while editing, you can increase the color. It's like adding a filter on it. It makes your video look much better. So while, if you, will, if you have plans to color grade your footage, then you can use uh, neutral, and uh, that will help you to add color. All right, now let's look at the other example. White balance. What happens when you have a wrong white balance? So this is, uh, again, white balance auto. And if you have 
you know, for Gordon to check your white balance and if you have wrong white balance settings, your video may look like this. As you can see, this is horrible. This is not nice. Again, this is not nice. Too high. So this is custom. This is almost most realistic how it was. And it was shot a couple of years back. And this, this was shot during a very bad uh, day. Like, it was like there was sandstorm and stuff so this is how it looks and this is again shot in neutral no color correction done all right so that's about the white balance let's look at the stabilization which i mentioned So this image stabilization, which I'm showing you here as an example, is stabilization available on the lens, not the camera one. So some cameras has the stabilization option built in. Some of the lenses also have it. So let's look at the example here. So this was a video, again, handheld shot. As you can see how shaky it is. The stabilization was off. And immediately when I turned on the stabilization on, as you can see, this is smooth. Again, it's handheld shot. So I hope uh, this session, all till now, the session was really helpful. You were able to learn something new. And let's look at uh, the other options too. One minute. Let's talk about uh, lenses. Oops. Yes, lenses. You don't need to buy all the lenses in the market. You just need to buy the one which you need, actually. You know, you must be wondering what's the best lens and how to decide which one to buy. But as you can see, there are loads of lenses. Let's talk about the information on your lens too. We are not going to cover the whole part, but as you can see, this is the front side of the lens. It says Canon Zoom Lens, EFM, the type of the lens, and there's another number. This, that's what in particular we're going to talk now. 1545 mm, which is called focal length. Or oh, this is a zoom range from which point we can start shooting and until which what point we can zoom in. You know the distance it covers. All right, so. How can you know that and by knowing uh, what you can what you want to capture right so let's look at uh, the focal length the numbers which you saw on the lens like 1545 is called focal length. let's categorize them for understanding in a better way all right so we have different numbers let's start from uh, example from 10 mm to 35 so even if you find a lens below 10 mm until 35, so 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 18, until 35, these lenses are categorized as wide angle lenses. Wide angle lenses are actually used for architecture and landscape. And uh, it's very good lens while you, if you are planning to do a travel vlog or a wildlife or wildlife or nature kind of vlog, you know, you're carrying the camera around with you and you want to show the place or city, these kind of things, you want to show a wider area, then you should choose a wider wider angle lens so these are the lenses you should go for starting from either 10 to 35 you know so after 35 the results what you're going to get till 70 is going to be very normal looking results like the way we see with our eyes it's the the peripherum or the area we see is not going to be really wide it's going to be very natural like the way we our human eye can see so that's what is uh, from 35 to 70 these are good for videos like this like interview shots, head shots, or, you know, product reviews and something like that. Because it gives you very natural looking videos. After that, from 70 to 135, these are actually, the lenses afterwards are actually used for photography, not for video as such, unless if there is a special situation where you need to use these lenses, such as wildlife or birds, uh, kind of, or if you want to capture something in distance, all right? So 
as you can see here on this slide, you have different results and how the, uh, the, the view is going to be from the lens. As you can see, the 11 mm, that's the widest, the blue one, the blue triangle, it gives you a wider perspective. And as you can see, if, if it goes to the four, when you go to the 400 mm, the last one, it's very, very, very narrow and it's really close to the far farthest object. So these are some my, some of my recommendations uh, if you want to buy lenses. If you have a M50 camera, which is EOS M50, it's a mirrorless crop sensor camera. This is uh, one of the best lens uh, to start with for travel vlogging, architecture and landscape vlogging kind of stuff. Uh, the focal length starts from 11 to 22. It's also good uh, if you have two of you sitting and talking to the camera, then if you want to both of them, you don't have to keep your camera far away from you. You can use any of the, I mean, you can use, you could use these lenses like 11 to 22 if you're using an uh, EOS M50. A similar focal length can be uh, achieved or similar focal length lenses can be found in other type of lenses such as EF lenses, which is a normal uh, DSLR camera. Or also you can find uh, RF lenses, which is for EOS R, RP, and R5, and R6 cameras. So there are three different mounts, especially in Canon, which is EF, RF, EFS, and uh, uh, EFM. EFS and EF goes with uh, DSLRs, crop sensors, and RF goes with uh, EOS R series cameras, and EFM lenses goes with EF mirrorless crop sensors. The camera. So if you have one of the uh, M50 or EOS R and if you would like to use your friends or your brothers or some, some of your old lenses which are EF or EFS, you could actually get these kind of adapters and you can use those lenses lying around. So it can give you the best result. All right. I hope uh, we, we have reached uh, the end and now I want to give you some quick tips while filming which will help you to you know enhance the quality of your vlog so prepare a script as we discussed at the beginning prepare a script of your topic and be prepared to save time keep the camera always on eye level so you don't have to look up or look down that looks weird actually if you're talking to the audience and do not look away from the camera if you do so your audience will lose their interest watching if you're not talking to them. Do not use autofocus if it is static shot. It's not wise. Unless your camera is capable of giving you the face tracking, then you can use if you're using using it for a headshot video. Always start recording at least five seconds before you start actually talking. So do not immediately press record and start talking because keep a safe zone there. Like five seconds is always good. And avoid unnecessary noise in audio recording. You know, you don't want to have any you don't want to keep the window open or you don't want to keep the door open. So if you're doing indoors, make sure you're in a good place where the noise is not disturbing your audio recording. Or if you're doing out, outdoors, make sure you have proper microphone to cancel the noise, the wind or any other traffic noise you may have. All right. And then engage with your audience. Use a clean background or use something very attractive, light up the background or do something so that it looks beautiful. Nothing looks less professional than messy or distracting background, right? And prioritize crisp, clear audio is important. Avoid shaky footage because nobody wants to see that. And work on your camera presence. Here, you know, appear appearance of you is very important. Be with be be there in front of your camera with enough confidence so that you know your Video will have enormous impact on how professional your content looks. Shoot from variety of angles. Again, this brings us back to the old top old topic which we discussed earlier. Don't be stingy. You know, talk. You know, shoot enough. If if your content is only for five minutes, shoot for fifteen minutes and shoot from wide variety angles. And also shoot more B-roll. That again makes your production value higher. Choose a good video editing program and uh, that can again improve the quality of the video. Keep your editing simple. You're not editing any fancy videos or something like that. Unless it requires a fancy editing, do not, you know, do unnecessary, distractive 
edit or transitions and you know don't go crazy that's it and uh, a simple clean editing again makes most looks uh, generally looks most professional a few things you should be sure to during the editing stage including you know noise cancelling again maybe while you recorded the video there was enough little bit of noise and you can use noise cancellation adjust the lighting maybe the video when you shot it was little dark so in your editing software you can actually adjust the lighting if you want to bring up or bring down the lighting that you have done cutting out the awkward pauses and silences you know there will be a situation where you stammer there will be situations where you have lost your words or something like that those kind of things you need actually if unless it is live like this that's different story but if you're doing a normal vlog where you're uploading videos then cut it out you know you don't want those things to you know appear and you know people feel that you're unprofessional all right and adding a background music will be good because uh, that creates a mood and also add some time lapses if you the city you're talking about or the city you're talking from or the place you're going to talk or visit you know some kind of interesting things shooting time lapse videos and adding it to your vlog will make your video much more interesting and exciting and just by uploading your videos is not enough promote your videos keep sharing keep sharing and you know do it from your heart it will give you the best results also few more important points to remember make sure you respect the rules and regulations of the country from wherever you are you know broadcasting it from and don't be racist or don't talk about caste religion culture etc while filming outside be aware of the public do not bypass anybody's privacy you know to respect others look for concerned authorities permissions while filming both outdoors you know both outdoors or some kind of places you know where, whether you need to require any prior permissions to do that because otherwise you will end up having your camera confiscated or something so it's always good to know uh, about the regulations and the rules in place and that's about it you can also have few gears to you know uh improve your skills such as you can have a heavy duty fluid head tripod or a monopod again that's good or a gimbal as you can see on the screen that's a gimbal and a slider this is again the way far uh, things not required at the initial stage and uh, remember keep learning keep filming and keep telling stories because you are a storyteller and happy vlogging i hope that's enough for this webinar and i believe you have learned something new today and as you know the time was very little and i couldn't i could i wish i could talk more and give you more more and more and more information now if you have any questions i'm available here for the rest of a lot of time to answer them so looking forward to your questions and signing off amit thank you um and mama thai uh thank you so much for the session and actually we do have a few questions are you able to see them on the bottom of the screen uh, in the q section yeah i see them 12 of them right so i don't have a camera okay that's the first question i see and uh, can you send the camera tight okay mm, so i think me... some questions you might have already answered um what is fps how do you set it up okay i it the, there are few questions so i need to scroll down and see which one okay how do we know that how many fps does our camera record in so the, i i can just type the answer right or do you want me to say the answer over here yeah you can answer right now while they're still waiting uh, okay and- how do we know that how many fps does our camera record in uh franchu okay you just need to go to the menu uh, menu screen and over there in video mode you will find an option where exact just like the way i showed my screen where it was showing 24k 25p you know that 25 stands for fps so that means 25 frames per second that's where you can actually find how many frames per second uh your camera can actually record in uh what shutter speed would you recommend for filming a short movie shutter speed again as i said 1 by 50th is the shutter speed standard shutter speed for the standard fps which is 25 so 1 by 50 should you know do and do not change the shutter speed in order to control the light keep your shutter speed always constant 25 fps 
Prashant Kumar, I believe. I hope that is answered. And can you show where is autofocus option on a camera where the form of FPS have been said the FPS? The focus option, most of the cameras will have it on the side of your lens, AF and MF. AF stands for autofocus, MF stands for manual focus. And uh, what is the full form of FPS? I explained earlier, frames per second, right? How do we set the FPS? Go to the menu screen, movie recording quality. That's where you find what quality you want to record the movie, either, 20, uh, either 4K or full HD, and what FPS, 25, 24, 50. There are many options. The standard I would suggest for blogging would be 25 FPS. And we have higher FPS for higher requirements for slow motion videos and such uh, options. But we are not talking about it right now. So why are DSLR cameras not equipped with far focal lenses, reaching focus, variable things? I don't get that question. Ambram, was there a typo? Lenses, reaching What should uh, ISO while you're filming dark areas? As I said, the ISO, regarding the ISO, you can increase your ISO uh, uh, at up to whatever the value is available on your camera, but try to remain low as possible because if you can remain in 100, that is the best because it will have no noise at all. But if you can try to leave, uh, remain in 800, that is the best. Again, if not 800, the max you can go is up 1600 again, please. Don't get me wrong, it completely depends on the camera you're using because even in Canon itself, we have different range of cameras, beginner cameras, you know, entry-level cameras, semi-professional cameras and professional cameras. All these cameras will react in a different way if you increase the ISO. The amount of noise will be different. How do you get rid of a flicker from a TV screen when you're recording a subject next to it? The screen is used by subject use. Okay, so these... Uh, the flicker, the flicker which happens because of LED lights or TV screens can be adjusted either if you have an option uh, by adjusting an option in your camera. Have you seen PAL and NTFC? You know, in that, if you try changing your hertz of your camera, if you change from PAL to um, NTFC, it will help you to flick, uh, correct the flickering or you need to adjust the shutter speed, but make sure that particular shot is not moving short. Because if if it is static shot where the camera is not moving, then you can adjust the shutter speed to get rid of the flickering for just for a while. It's just for one shot, something like that. The next question, I use a full frame 60, doesn't have any video or focus or face tracking, so it will be increasing the aperture, an ideal way for a more shallow focus, so movement would be too much of a fixed focus. Mm, it has pretty decent ISO. 64, okay. Let us keep the recording. Reduce bokeh, which makes less dramatic. Uh, Canon 6D is a very good full frame, uh, you know, uh, cost effective camera, and I believe uh, the autofocus is also very good. Well, only thing what you need to make sure is the AI servo, which is there is an option, even if you put it on autofocus, make sure the AI servo mode is on. That means you are telling the camera to keep focusing. Otherwise, the camera will focus only once. So please make sure that particular mode. In autofocus itself, in your camera settings, you will find servo, enable, and disable. For me, please make sure the servo enable is on. And uh, what was the, the 24? Uh, and again, if you want to compensate the lighting by in, in, instead of increasing, increasing the shutter speed or aperture, you can use an NT filter. Again, if I say ND filter, because I'm not, I wasn't talking about ND filters so for others, it might be confusing. So you have other ways by controlling the aperture or keeping the ISO low or using the ND filter, you can pick up the light. What is the best camera type? To be honest, uh, I'm trying to find the answer. So it's not actually the camera, it's the person who is behind the camera. So both mirrorless and DSLR cameras are really good and you actually make the choice by deciding what you actually want. For blogging and for travel, I would personally suggest my, my from my experience is a mirrorless camera because as it is lightweight and compact and easy to carry around and easy to mount on small gimbals and it's very easy. 
uh, any tips on filming indoors as we are in quarantine and what kind of uh, tips are you looking for uh, look for some nice spot in your house look for nice lighting soft light and uh, try to give some backlight i actually i have kept the tv here so that there is some kind of illumination behind me and there's a light which is coming from the side you know try to give it a contrast that would be good which camera is good for class room lecture recording uh i would suggest you should go for a camcorder kind of camera because it will record more than you know the duration of the recording like it won't be split a dslr or a mirrorless camera the recording will be split in 29 minutes so go for a camera which can record a uh, non stop continuous so those are like x uh, i believe the model is x11 there are a couple of models there gx10 these are good cameras from canon which can record un uh, uninterruptedly long longer video and uh, what would be the ideal to shoot at higher shutter speed at 24 is maybe around 120 for more action and fast paced style i have seen dance videos or movies okay in that case you cannot just increase the f uh, shutter speed first you need to change if it is something fast moving and you want to capture them much more crisper or if you want to have more control over it in post production such as making it slow motion or fast motion then you need to have a higher fps which is 50 or 60 or even if in fact if you have 100 and 120 go for that one and then multiply the fps by 2 which is uh if it is 50 you get 1 by 100 as shutter speed if it is uh, 60 you choose your shutter speed as 1 by 120th if it is 120 then it goes on like that what is the best vlogging camera for beginners uh there are many right now this video you're watching i'm i'm, I'm shooting this one in EOS R and see there's another EOS R behind me that's one of my favorite camera and for beginners if you're looking for you can go for M50 or G7X. These are the two cameras and both of them are in mirrorless. If you want DSLR, I really feel uh, 250D is good, 80D is good, 90D is also. I think we have like a couple of people asking how to add background music to the vlogs and that's a question even I had. So Okay, that's a very good question. uh adding background music it depends on what platform you're editing your video if you if you're using your phone to edit your videos there are different programs now i see a lot of changes happening okay, there are many apps now to edit your videos you don't even need to use your computer so what you see is there are a couple of i mean again i can answer the question but i'm afraid about the timing so actually if this is there are two there's a timeline in your app which in whichever app or software where you're editing your video if, let's say if you're editing your video in premiere pro on your pc you have your video track you have your audio track this means the dialogue the dialogue what i'm saying so you have this together and there will be a third line where you can add in audio either in video but now when we are talk since we are talking about background music you will be adding underneath that one you can add your background there and please make sure to keep the level uh adjusted uh, uh, as per the dialogue so people can hear the dialogues not just the background music you know and to, in order to do that you need to use your editing software and to i don't know who asked that question it, it would be better if that person tells me what software he's using to edit the videos then i explain it because personally i use, use has asked muzamil if you'd like to type yeah um, muzamil ali mir okay how do how to add music to my blogs uh which software do you use and uh, as you know there are different timelines uh or in 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 timelines you have different tracks to add videos on top of your video like a text or title mm-hmm. something like that similar to that you have another line where you can add your background music but make sure while adding background music you have the copyright right to add the music in your video otherwise whichever platform you are you know uploading the video you may get a copyright claim and that will disqualify or that will ban your account, account and so many things may happen so use royalty free music or if you compose your own music make sure you do that not you know put any other random songs or something like that because 
you tend to get a copyright claim. It happens with loads of people on YouTube. So you can actually Google to get free royalty music if you don't want to pay for it. Otherwise, there are many other websites where you can actually pay and get a royalty music for yourself. Uh, there's a very interesting question. I don't know whether you want to answer that. And that's why Can you record ghosts in your vlog? Is that the one you're talking about? Okay, yeah. Muzammil. Uh, I, uh, if you find one, please let me know. I would love to try Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's uh, there are two more questions on the chat box. Um, the, there's one which says, how do we use manual focus if the camera doesn't have touch screen? I thought that was interesting. Where is it? Okay, the question, whoever asked this question, how do you use the, uh, just a minute, how do you use the, let me get the camera. Okay, so I believe you can see the camera here. So, this particular ring is actually the zoom, as you know, everyone, basic, that's basic information. And another ring is there, which is the focus ring. So this particular camera now, it's on autofocus. I can switch to manual focus. If it isn't manual focus, then I can use this one. If it is an autofocus, the camera will do it in video recording, all right? Now, as I said earlier, while using autofocus in video, you need to make sure the servo is on. In, in that case, the camera will automatically focus the moving subject. Yes, if something is moving or the camera is moving, we'll keep the subject always in focus, in autofocus. In manual focus, you have decided that you are going to focus. So the ring which helps you to focus is this one and you need to practice to track the focus. Or you can have another additional device which are used by professional filmmakers, which is called a polo focus, which we attach here and that person remotely controls the focus. You know, that's another thing. So I'm currently using DaVinci Resolve screen to do my editing. Would you say that is a good editing software? Yes, indeed, that is a very good software to edit your videos and also to color your videos. That's a very good software. I personally use Adobe Premiere and I use Adobe, I mean, DaVinci Resolve to color grade my footage at times. Any other question? Of cameras which don't have the rings. Um, what does that mean? Cameras which don't have the ring. I don't know which camera is that which doesn't have a ring. If the camera doesn't have a ring, that means the camera will have the autofocus on touch screen or it will focus. Like the touch screen will be there. These are the small pocket cameras maybe he's talking about. Those yeah, cameras that's what having, it is. Yes, those cameras will have, uh, those are going to be like your phone, you know? And uh, of course, uh, they will have that screen and you can focus on your subject. A quick I just, I, I, it will help me to answer which, uh, which right. if he tells me which camera is using and what was the problem. There's another question, is shortcut a good software? Shortcut of? I believe it's a name of a software. Is Shortcut a good software? I haven't heard of that software. I need to Same do here. a research on that. Kirti Napoleon, right? Yes, I haven't heard that name of the software till date. So maybe if I you know, get a chance to look around, maybe I'll give a question later. Yes, okay. I think we've pretty much covered all this. Just one last question I think we can do. Uh, it's from- No problem. I will share my contact details here. If anyone has a question, they can reach me here later also, because as I know, this time is very limited, right? So I'm fine, but late if, if someone wants to have any question answered you know, in detail that they can reach. Sure, just I hope this one, uh, which is on the chat box is Nikon Coolpix P610, a good camera for photography. That's the last one, I guess. See, then I would, maybe I would answer this and say all cameras sure. are good. It depends on your skill and, you know, what you want to take pictures with, right? I mean, it's finally, yeah. what are you taking, trying to take pictures with? So, Brown, I mean, there's no, yes. I don't think yeah, there are bad Nowadays, things. as you can see, there are people who, you know, do amazing photo, photography with their phones 
and you if you are in social media you will find many of them doing that so a camera is just a tool for you to capture what you want to capture you know it's like a pen so i personally have i don't really have a good handwriting you know when it comes to writing i really don't have a good handwriting so but i always and and we the people around me who has very good handwriting and i have every time thought maybe god made like this i if i could borrow their pen and start writing like them you know but it's not possible right i i need to practice i need to improve focus on it it takes time so similar to that a camera is just a tool what how much you spend and how much passion you have to love and learn in to do photography or cinematography that much you will learn and trust me every day i'm learning today yes i mean i'm looking forward to learn even more you know so there'll be new things coming up and new things to experiment on so we keep learning so that's what i said happy shooting be filming keep learning thank you so much mohammed thank you so much uh, you thank so you so much me um so i think we we'll end it here uh, guys just to let you know uh, this is a big thank you from the school of media at murdoch university dubai a big thank you to canon for arranging this for us and getting us mr mohammed to come and speak to us thank you for all your thank video, you mr jo photos uh, thank you so much for showing it to us and uh, thank you to each one of the participants who have stuck around with us thank you again guys we have a wonderful undergraduate media program if you need details please visit us on our www.murdochuniversitydubai.com as well so thank you uh, i see a lot of people already signing out thank you so much and uh, see you for the next webinar soon yep yeah. thanks thank you mr thank joseph you. thank you bye bye thank you mega yeah bye bye, bye. take care bye bye